Hey guys, it's Ethan from Zimmer Labs, and this is uh, just going to be a quick video. I wanted to show you guys um, the bandsaw that I um, put together last week. It came out so well, and it was such a easy, inexpensive little project that I wanted to share it with you guys. For those of you guys who are do-it-yourself kind of people, if you have a shop, um, bandsaws are incredibly useful, like just for so many things, but they're you know, for a good one, they're way overpriced. And when I say bandsaw, I don't mean a portable handheld one. I mean a stationary, semi-robust metal cutting bandsaw. Um, you're looking at at least $1,000 for a decent to relatively good bandsaw. And that's a lot of money for a lot of people. So I did a little bit of research and I found some... Uh, videos of some people that had basically taken a Harbor Freight or inexpensive handheld bandsaw and made a little apparatus to mount it to to make it into a bench mounted non portable metal cutting bandsaw and I just I loved the idea so I went out and got the best uh, Milwaukee corded bandsaw that I could find for a reasonable price and designed my own version of the of the apparatus and threw it together and I can't I can't tell you how happy I am with it and how well it came out so I just figured I'd show you guys um, basically you can do this with pretty much any handheld bandsaw that you find but ideally as far as I'm concerned you want to get the largest one you can get which this is a five and a quarter inch which is about the largest one I could find most of them are most of them are five inch from here to here and five inch from here to here meaning you can take a square you know a five inch square of steel and you can cut right through it because it'll slide up all the way into here that's the thought process behind whoever's designing these but you want to have as much you know cutting room as you can so if you have to cut something big you can cut something big nine times out of ten you're gonna be cutting a screw so it's not gonna be that important but on the you know on the rare occasion that you need to cut something large you don't want to find that your saw is just not big enough to do it yeah here we go it's an old carriage bolt that I will probably never use for anything it's a quarter inch yeah it looks like about a quarter inch to me um, what I did was I took the handheld Milwaukee bandsaw that I got um, I removed the handle this handle used to go it's always mounted here but it used to go the other way and then it also mounted to this section here with screws going up into here and so I removed that and I built this Z arm thing here a little armature type type guy I got some pillow bearings. These pillow bearings right here, and I made a half inch axle that goes right through the Z armature and through the two pillow bearings. Mounted the pillow bearings to some four inch oak stock that I had um, kicking around. This is actually a, uh, a mailbox post, an oak mailbox post that's what it was originally and I had bought it to make legs for something and so I had a little bit left over and rather than throw it away I saved it because I figured hunks of four inch oak are probably going to come in handy so the trick is to build the Z arm and mount the bandsaw to it and then figure out how high you need to elevate it so that when it is flat it's level with you know whatever the base is that you're working on so if it's a tabletop or a bench, you want this blade to be parallel to the bench when you put it down at the bottom. And when you get to that level, you want to have enough height supporting the uh, the pillow bearings that the whole thing is parallel to the bench. So, you know, they don't have to be four inches. If you put the axle a little bit further up in the arm here, 
then it would be lower. It would probably be two inches. You could put a little further back, and then these would have to be higher. Um, but for me, for my setup, for where it is, four inches worked out nicely. The only real tricky part of this was figuring out how to turn the saw on and off. Because initially what I wanted to do was just run some wires through the arm and out the back and just run a switch to it so I could just click on and then, you know, use the saw and then turn it off. But this specific saw that I bought, unfortunately, turned out it had a really funky switch. So that was basically a no-go. I couldn't do that. Um, hopefully you guys can see it, but it's got a trigger switch here. And then it's got a high and low switch here. And there are like eight or eight to ten wires that go in between these two switches and then into the motor and all the way around into the, to the different areas of the motor because this motor's not just a standard on-off motor, it's a two-phase motor. So it's high and low and on and off and you know, yada yada yada. So unfortunately just wiring an external on-off switch wasn't gonna work. Or at least it wasn't gonna work easily enough that I wanted to do it. So I decided to just keep this switch and use the switch but it has to stay in this handle and the only way to make that work is to have the switch over here which doesn't make any sense and then I thought well why don't I just swing it around and remount it so it's the exact same way as it was so that's I figured I'd give that a try and see if that worked and as you can see it worked just fine so all you have to do is basically take this handle grip that's here swing it around here and then re-bolt it down and uh, then to use the, the saw, you just hit the trigger. And down. The only thing involved with that is the wires for the cord, for the power, used to come out right here and go to the outlet. So you have to rerun the wires and reroute them to go the other direction through the armature and then out the back. And so as you can see, I ran them so they come out over here. And then you can just send that down to the outlet and plug it in. After that, if you want to get funky, these these are not light. You know, this is a, probably a 40-pound tool. And so without any support, it's going to want to just be down. And then as soon as you lift it up, let it go, it's going to slam back down again. So I wanted to do something to support it. And I was thinking about putting one or two large springs on the back side of this arm here, anchoring the springs down here so that, that would give it some up force, trying to pull it up or at least, you know, counterbalance the weight. But then I thought, why not do strong arms? That'll actually stabilize the whole thing. Um, because the only real flaw that I found with this design was that it had a bit of wiggle front to back. And you don't want to have any more bend than you absolutely have to because you don't want to have a crooked cut if you're trying to cut and you pull it while you're doing it and you wiggle it at all then you're going to be you're going to end up with a botched crooked cut so I figured if I do strong arms that'll actually stabilize the wiggle from front to back if I extend the strong arms out front to back so that's what I did I took another half inch um, threaded rod and ran it through this top section of the armature here put some locking bolts on to basically mount and anchor that rod to the arm just to stabilize it more and then I used my new lathe to turn the to turn the ends of that threaded rod and create little balls on the end so that the strong arms could just pop on and lock onto the end on both sides and then just mounted the strong arms to the uh, four inch oak blocks here. And now, as you can see, this thing is fully supported. Like 40 pounds, it feels like it's nothing. It, it's literally like a zero G metal saw, which is awesome because now you really have to do nothing. And um, it's not gonna fall and slam down and you know chip the saw blade or smash anything up and you know, on its own, it basically just wants to hang out up like this. But it also is much more stable front to back now. I mean, as you can see, if I intentionally wiggle it, there is some front to back movement still, but 
not much. I mean, it's about a quarter of an inch front to back right here on the blade. Yeah, about a quarter of an inch front or back. Whereas before, without these strong arms, it probably would have gone a full inch front to back. But if you don't intentionally wiggle it, you don't get any motion. Like you can, you can easily without very much, without very much effort at all, you can just run it and drop it down and cut whatever you need cutting, and it's not going to move on you. So the strong arms are great for stabilizing the front to back movement of it, and this thing does really nice, accurate cuts now. So I'm super pleased with how it came out. The whole thing as a project cost about 150 bucks, whereas a saw of this size and this quality, if you bought a permanently, you know, mounted metal metal bandsaw of this quality and this size, you'd be spending at least a thousand dollars. You know, like if you look at a Shop Fox or a Jet, you're probably a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars, maybe even a little bit more to get something of this quality. And I did the same thing for 150 bucks and a half an afternoon of work. Uh, and then the only other thing you have to have is some sort of device to hold whatever metal you're cutting. So I happen to have this little mini vise already in my shop that I use for holding down small metal pieces that I'm working on. So I just mounted that to the, uh, to the base of the table here and then I put a, a bit that fits into the screw head that's inside here and got an extension and, you know, connected it up to a screw gun. And now I have a powered motorized locking vise that fits perfectly inside of that bandsaw mouth. So I can just, you know, put whatever item I want to cut in there, lock it down. Crank up the bandsaw. And that was very little downward, downward force at all. I mean, you can literally just let the weight of the saw itself or the weight of your arm do the cutting and it'll go right through there like butter. Um, or you can press down if you want to speed the process up. You don't have to. As you guys can see, nice clean cut. Well. I admit, there are times in life that a hacksaw is exactly what you need. A metal bandsaw is much, much better because it's so damn easy and it just makes me happy that this little project, you know, again, it's just a little thing, but it's something that anyone can do. It's something that anyone who has any, any workshop essentially can use and will enjoy. And it's something anyone can afford because like I said, this was just super inexpensive. And, you know, there are a million of these, you know, high-end Milwaukee or DeWalt or Makita bandsaws used, available on the internet for sale. I picked this one up off eBay for 90 bucks, and then I spent another 60 bucks on the parts. So, boom, 150 bucks, and you've got a heavy-duty, multi-speed metal cutting bandsaw that can, you know, handle anything up to five inches wide. And, uh... Yeah, so I just figured I'd pass that on to you guys. I hope it's helpful to one or more of you guys. And, of course, if you, anyone has questions about it, happy to answer any questions. Or if anybody wants me to just make them one, if you're feeling lazy, let me know. I can throw another one of these together, no problem. Um, and it certainly isn't going to take very long. All right, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Next video is going to be the new MK1.